What's up everybody, TCM here, back with another video. And recently I released a video called How to Access the Dark Web Safely. And in that video, we cover how to use certain tools like Tails and Tor, and how to have the correct settings enabled when you access the dark web and thus do so safely. Well, in that video, we had a lot of comments about VPNs. A lot of people were asking, what about a VPN? Or why don't you use a VPN over Tor? And by a lot of comments, I don't mean just one or two or three, I mean a lot of comments. So this video is meant to address why you should not use a VPN over Tor and why it's just a really bad idea. So we'll cover the concepts of a VPN over Tor, and then we'll talk about some of the situations that have uh, arisen in the last few years of why VPNs over Tor are a really bad idea. So with that out of the way, please do consider hitting the like button if you like the video, and please do consider subscribing to the channel. We're almost at 400,000 subscribers. I never thought I'd make it this far, and I owe it to each and every one of you. So thank you so much for all the subscriptions, and I hope to keep making great content for you as we go on in the future. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a quick word from our sponsor, and then we're going to dive right into why a VPN over Tor is a very bad idea. This video is brought to you by Keeper Security. Keeper protects your organization's passwords with an ultra secure and easy to use vault your employees will love. Keeper enables your employees to securely create and share strong passwords and is the highest rated product in the industry. I love Keeper Security's web interface. Now I can come in here and keep all my credentials from my favorite pasta recipes if I want to, but that's not all. I can come in here and actually create records for lots of different things. We have login records, payment records, contacts, addresses, bank accounts. We can even put photos or driver's license, even your favorite SSH keys if you want. You can store it all in here securely and safely within the vault. Another really cool feature that I like about the web interface is this security audit tool. It tells you how strong your passwords are, if you're reusing any passwords, which you totally should not be doing, and if you have any weak passwords that need updated. As a security professional, I really love that. So what are you waiting for? Follow the link in the description below and receive a free three-year personal plan of Keeper's award-winning consumer password manager. So in order to understand why VPN with Tor is a bad idea, we must first understand how Tor works. Now this comes from Surfshark VPN, this image does, and this is not a sponsorship from Surfshark. I just really like this image. I'll link them down in the description below because I'm using their imagery and I wanna give full credit where credit's due. I think it's a great picture and illustrates how Tor works. So we have us, the individual, correct? The user. And we want to access the Tor network. We want to go to what is a dot onion website. We need to get here. Well, there are three nodes in between that process. Okay, we need to go and we need to go through the entry node. Now you can see the eyeball here says your IP address is known. So when you access the Tor network, you go into what is called an entry node. And then you go into a middle node, and then you go into what is called an exit node, though they have it listed here as a middle node. Now, your IP address is known to the first node, and it is also known to your internet service provider that you are using Tor. So if your internet service provider does not allow Tor, then maybe a VPN is an exception in this case. However, it is known that you are using Tor when you are accessing it from your home network. With that in mind, these other nodes can become compromised. So while this data and traffic is encrypted and every node that you go to your IP address changes, well, if somebody owns all of these nodes or has compromised these nodes, well, then they can trace back your IP address to you. So if you're doing anything on Tor that you would not want to be found out, then it can become compromised just using the Tor network. Now, the chances of that happening who knows? There are theories out there that the government owns a lot of nodes. There is a story going around currently about somebody buying up a lot of different uh, nodes on the network and they own a large percentage for what reason we don't know quite exactly. So uh, you always need to be careful when you're accessing Tor. And again, you should never be entering in any private information or data over Tor, regardless of how you're using it. So just know that when you're using the Tor network, your data is encrypted, your IP address can become known, but this is the traffic and how it goes through. There's usually a three hop of nodes before you get to your actual exit area. 
Now the other side of this is using a VPN in front of the Tor network. So here you can see Surfshark again, we're using their imagery. They say, hey, we've got a VPN server right here and the IP address will not be known to the Tor network. That is true. However, your internet service provider will still know that you are using a VPN. They will not know that you're using Tor. So again, if Tor is blocked by your ISP, this might be the only way to actually access Tor is with a VPN in front of it. Now, the big issue here is that everything has to go through this VPN server. You would think that that would add a layer of privacy for you because now Tor does not know your IP address. Only the VPN server knows your IP address. So it sounds a lot safer, right? Well, in theory it is, but it's not. And the big reason why is we have to rely on VPN servers not to maintain logs. And by that, I mean that VPN servers out there will say, hey, we do log all of the traffic that comes through. So anything that you're doing over our VPN server, we're seeing. Or they will say, hey, we're not logging anything. Trust us. We're safe. I promise. And here's a great example of why we can't believe VPN companies when they say they don't take logs. Here's one from a company called PureVPN that went down in 2017. I'll link this article down below as well. Now, I'm not advocating for stalking or what this person was doing. I am happy this person got caught. It's just the ethics behind what happened in this situation. So here's what happened. Pure VPN has a policy that stated, we do not keep any record of your browsing activities, connection logs, records of the VPN IPs assigned to you, your original IPs, your connection time, the history of your browsing, the sites you visited, your outgoing traffic, the content or data you access, or the DNS queries generated by you. Unfortunately, the lie detector determined that was a lie. Oh, now in this case, Pure VPN helped the FBI track down an internet stalker by combining its logs to reveal his IP address. Now the stalker was logging in via Tor to conceal his IP address and was using a VPN in front of it. So he was doing what a lot of people were saying, hey, this protects me, I'm using a VPN in front of Tor, only my ISP can see I'm using a VPN and nothing else. And in theory, that is true if there's no logging going on. Now this company stated that they were not logging VPN traffic and that was a lie. And how can we trust other VPN companies to be telling us the truth? Now, this VPN company, Pure VPN, was saying, hey, we're not logging any traffic. And that was a lie. And in this case, I understand, hey, they helped catch a bad guy. So it's one of those catch-22 situations. But what I'm saying at the end of the day is, if we're in a situation where you're asked to trust a VPN provider for not having logs, absolutely do not. I would much rather trust Tor and the Tor network to be anonymous before I would trust a VPN provider to say, hey, we're actually not taking logs. Now, there's a lot of great VPN providers out there. Most of them claim that they don't take logs. I don't trust any of them. If I'm going to use a VPN, I'm using it for certain reasons, like at the airport or where I think I have a network that could be compromised. I'm not going to use a VPN to access Tor or get on any networks. I'm only going to use a VPN in certain situations that benefit me or I know I need to take that risk because the risk on the other side is much greater, such as using an airport or hotel Wi-Fi. So the next time that you use a VPN and you think that it's 100% safe and think that things are not being logged, then you're probably incorrect. We can't trust what the VPN companies say as much as I'd like to, as much as I'd love a VPN with no logging and that they can prove there's no logging, understand that VPN companies are not looking out for your best interest by any means. So um, take it with a grain of salt when a VPN company says we don't do logging and never use a VPN in front of Tor if you are at all concerned about your privacy. So that's it for this video. I do thank you for joining me. And until next time, my name is The Cyber Mentor. Peace out.